Good afternoon and welcome to the Green Mountain Care Board meeting. The first item on the agenda is the executive director's report, Susan Barrett. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, have a couple of scheduling reminders. Um, folks should know that our uh, schedule is located in our public meeting section of our um, website, but wanted to call out that uh, on Monday, July 20th, the board will be um, have its first rate review hearing, and that's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont. That's starting at 8 a.m. Um, and then on Tuesday, July 21st, um, we will have the MVP, Qualified Health Plan Rate Review Hearing. Uh, both of these meetings will be online through Microsoft Teams. And then in addition, on Tuesday, July 21st, starting at 4.30 and going to 6.30, the board will be holding a Qualified Health Plan Rate Review Public Comment Forum. And again, uh, that will be held via Microsoft Teams. The information on how to access um, that information, again, is on our public meeting section of our website. I'd also like to remind folks that um, these rate cases are open for public comment. And if you um, click on our public comment section of our website, you can provide um, comments to the board on these rate cases. And that is all I have to announce. I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Susan. I'll turn it back to you in a second for um, the purposes of uh, taking attendance. But prior sure. to that, um, would some would like to make a motion of the minutes of Wednesday, June 24th? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of Wednesday, June 24th without any additions, deletions, or corrections. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Susan. Um, yes, yeah, so and I'm looking at the list, uh, and I don't, maybe maybe I can get some technical assistance from Abigail here. But so it, at the bottom, there's just phone numbers. After, after uh, uh, Spencer's um, name, there's just phone numbers. Let's Would you like see. me to call off the last four digits? Would that help you? Yeah, why don't you do it? Because they're not showing up on my screen for some reason. You have okay. to hit more. There's a little more link. Mm. I don't see those. I think you're going to have to do my job, Kevin. I'm sorry. Okay. 5001. If your phone number ends with the last four digits, 5001, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, it's Julia Shaw with the Health Care Advocate. Thank you, Julia. Um, 8703. Mike Del Treco. Thank you, Mike. 8869. Toby Howe, MMR. Thank you, Toby. 4534. Walter! <laughs> I didn't understand, did you? It was Walter, and I did oh. find the numbers, but okay. <laughs> got this one under control. Walter was checking in. 505. I'm calling CVM Medical Center. Thank you. 6376. Mort Wasserman. Thank you, Mort. 0043. Becky Lewandowski, DRM. Thank you, Becky. Um, 8461. John Olson, State Office of Rural Health. Thank you, John. 5835. I guess that's Abigail. Uh, 2177. I think that might be our office. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, 3212. Uh, Kathy Mahoney from the General Advisory Committee. Thank you, Kathy. 8888. I believe that's uh, Jeff Hubert. Thank you, Jeff. 3452. Rebecca Copan, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Thank you, Rebecca. 9806. 
Mike Fisher. Thank you, Mike. I think that's all I have for phone numbers. Everybody else has a name attached to it, I believe. So at this point in uh, time, we're going to um, go ahead, whoever spoke. I'll take it as an accidental uh, speaking then. Um, at this point in time, we're going to turn the meeting over to Lori Perry and David Glavin, and Lori's going to walk us through the health expenditure analysis report for 2018. So whenever the two of you are ready, take it away. Thank you. We're ready. Um, this is the 2018 Vermont health care expenditure analysis. And um, the topic that we will be covering is um, an introduction, the summary, and then uh, the 2018 Vermont resident analysis, the relationship to the total cost of care, the spending and growth, and how Vermont is compared to the national health expenditures from CMS, the Vermont provider analysis, then the revenues received by those providers and the growth, the hospital revenues, the migration of hospital inpatient discharges. And then we compare the resident analysis to the provider analysis. And we also have projections for the resident analysis and the provider analysis for 2018 through 2020. And then the appendix will show you some of our sources and methods in other tables. And then we'll also have the Tableau presentation that David Glavin will be presenting for you. Excuse me, one second. Sorry about that. Um, the expenditure analysis has been around since the 1990s, but recently the um, current statute is 18 VSA, 9375A, and 9383. The report examines trends in spending and sources of funds, analyzes broad sectors including hospitals, physicians, mental health, home health, and pharmacy. It also analyzes payers such as Medicare, Medicaid, commercial plans, self-insured employers, and HMOs or health maintenance organizations. We also quantify the spending for um, services for Vermonters within Vermont, having okay. services, and also for out of state patients having services within Vermont. We um, compare Vermont data to the national health accounts, which are with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is CMS. We use CMS's health consumption expenditures, which are a subset of the national health care expenditures, because Vermont doesn't monitor the research, pictures, equipment, and investments in health care as they're represented in the NHE. Uh, Vermont resident spending grew 1.9% in 2018. Uh -huh. This was lower than the increase seen in 2017 of 3.7%. And this equates to an average annual increase of 3.4% for the period of 2013 through 18. We saw commercial insurance increase, spending increase 1.7%, and that was mainly seen in the hospitals prescription drugs, and other unclassified services. Medicare spending increased 5.1%, and this was in home health, nursing homes, hospitals, physicians, and drugs. Medicaid spending increased 1.1%, mainly due to increases in mental health and other government activities, other professionals, and home health. Um, there have been a payer shift over time from 2010 through 2018. Uh, commercial insurance decreased from 38% to 33%, out-of-pocket decreased 14% to 13%, but Medicaid grew 24, from 24% to 27%, and Medicare increased from 19 to 24%. We also want to make note for your reference is this R with the state of Vermont in the circle. This represents 
resident analysis, and you'll see that through the whole resident side of this presentation. Then we compare Vermont expenditures to the United States. And as we mentioned, Vermont grew 1.9%. United States spending grew 4.8%. And this was an average annual increase of uh, 4%. Excuse me. This was higher than the 4% um, realized in 2017. We also look at per capita spending. And Vermont was 9995 or an increase of 1.4% over 17. The United States increased 10000 10,640. And Vermont's share of health care for the gross domestic product was 18.8% this year, and the United States was 16.9%. Vermont um, health care providers received re revenues um, for in and out of state patients this year, and that increased 3.2%, and that was an average increase of 3.4% for the period 2013 to 2018. Hospitals grew 3.5%, and this includes hospital-employed physicians. We also saw increases in other licensed professionals of 11%, home health of 9.5, independent physicians of 3.2, physician and DME 2.2, and drugs of 1. And, but we did see a decline for nursing homes of 2.3%. And then this symbol at the bottom of this slide with the P for Vermont means that that is our Vermont providers giving services to in and out of state patients. Now we'll go into the resident analysis. But first I wanted to um, let you know what the relationship of the resident analysis is to the total cost of care. The total expenditure analysis measures expenditures on a larger scale in its comprehensive level compared to the total cost of care as described in the All-Payer Accountable Care Organization model agreement. The expenditure analysis resident analysis estimates all Vermont residents, where the total cost of care is a subset of this resident analysis and it excludes certain populations such as uh, residents without insurance or they're covered by the Federal Employee Health Benefits Plan. The expenditure analysis provider estimates um, includes all populations receiving services in Vermont regardless of where they live. The total cost of care concentrates on Vermont residents only. The Expenditure analysis resident and provider estimates total expenditures. The total cost of care is limited to claim payments for the types of services covered by traditional Medicare or non-claims payments related to direct medical care. Total cost of care does not include retail pharmacy. We also wanted to uh, show you how it um, relates to each other. So the resident spend on the expenditure analysis is equal to about $6.3 billion. The total cost of care with the all-payer model is only 46% of that or $2.9 billion. And one care Vermont's budget of the total cost of care is $609 million. We just wanted to make sure that everybody can understand this relationship. Also, the ACO represented 10% of the total spending on the resident analysis. We, um, for this analysis, we look at 2013 through 2018, even though we have data way back to 91, and we always look at the payers, out-of-pocket commercial Medicare, Medicaid, and other government, which is local and federal, and then how do those payers spend on provider and facilities like hospitals, physicians, and nursing homes. And then we get the average changes, annual changes and average annual change in a five-year period. If there's any, by the way, if there's any questions at any time, feel free. And if I can't answer them right now, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I would just ask board members, if you do have a question to click on the hand so that we'll know that your hand is raised. The 
Uh, spending for the resident analysis from 2010 to 2018, um, this was an average annual increase of 3%. So in 2010, it was $4.9 billion. Now it's $6.3 billion. And as I mentioned before, the change between 17 and 18 was 1.9%. This is showing the in and out of state spending for us as residents. So we can go to Florida, we can go to New York. This is incorporated in the resident analysis. And these are all your, the services and the full dollars that were realized this year. So we were seeing most of the increases in spending equated to $114.1 million. And most of that was seen in drugs and supplies in the commercial insurance and out-of-pocket. Hospitals showed increases in commercial and out-of-pocket. Mental health and other government activities such as mental health clinics, home and community-based services were reported in Medicaid. Home health care increased in Medicare. Physicians increased in Medicare and out-of-pocket. So this is just the larger increases that we're seeing in the analysis this year. Then we also look at the payers, how they rack up. So for instance, the Medicaid payer makes up 27% of the spending and then 22%, excuse me, 25% of the enrollment. And commercial is 33% of the spending and 50% of enrollment. So we also, as you can tell with the enrollment, it doesn't account for out of pocket. So all of us like in Medicare or commercial would be having some out of pocket. And then this is another look. Where did your, our spending come from? Who paid for it? So health insurance from Medicare, Medicaid and commercial made up 84% of where the funds were coming from, but they spent it on the hospitals, physicians, drugs, mental health and other. And this is looking at commercial insurance and commercial insurance spending increased to $2.1 billion or 1.7% increase. This was $33.4 million. And the increases were seen in hospitals, drugs and supplies and other unclassified services. But we saw decreases in physicians, having a net cost of health insurance and other professionals. The in-state spending for commercial insured patients remained at 75 to 76% in the last couple of years. And commercial insurance enrollment decreased to 300, close to 315,000 residents or enrollment. So um, Laura, I'm gonna interrupt you because Susan texted me to say that um, Robin has a question. I never saw her hand raised on my screen, but um, Robin, go ahead. Okay, we, can, we can go back to it. It's a few slides back now, so don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Um, so um, this particular pair includes comprehensive major medical insurance, self-insured, dental, long-term care insurance, workers' comp, Medicare SUP, limited liability insurance. And the enrollment for commercial insurers was decreasing as the other two pairs of Medicare and Medicaid increased. Um, then I'm gonna go next to the Medicare payer. And this one increased 73.3 million or 5.1% to a total of 1.5 billion. And we saw increases in home health, hospital physicians, drugs and supplies, but decreases in other unclassified dentists and admin and net cost of health insurance. Medicare beneficiaries, this one was a, a little bit of a surprise. In 2017, 68% was in-state spending and 73% for 2018. And then Medicare enrollment increased 136,567, or 2% from last year. Um, because of our aging state, Medicare has continued to increase an average annual percent of 6.2% between 2013 and 18. And in 2012, spending was 1.1 billion. Now it's 1.5 billion. And we use VCures for this particular source um, 
to find the spending on Medicare. And um, for the last couple of years, we've used, excuse me, we used Medicare for the last couple of years. And the ACO accounts for approximately $385 million as Medicare revenue for their calendar year 2018. Medicaid increased to $1.7 billion, or $18.3 million, 1.1%. We saw increases in mental health and other government activities, other professionals, home health. There was decreases, surprisingly, in hospitals, drugs, and supplies, admin, and net cost of health insurance. The in-state spending for this particular pair remained at 85 to 86% for the last couple of years, and Medicaid's enrollment increased to 100, almost 155,000 people, or 3% from 2017. The information for Medicaid, we received that from the Agency of Human Services, and they reconcile that to the CMS Global Commitment Waiver. This, they also report on managed care organizations and the CHIP program, long-term care. And then V-Cures is used to support the claims and non-claim spending. Um, from the resources that I have, the um, $70.8 million from the ACO was capitation payments for Medicare Kate, and then that was based on the state fiscal year. And in Medicaid, there is, um, like we mentioned, mental health and other government activities. I thought I'd give you this slide to show you all of the type of services that are included in that particular category. So like mental health clinics, community rehab treatment, um, home and community-based services, managed care organization investments, substance abuse services and all that and all this spending. We have more if you would like it, just let me know. Um, we also, there's a big category that's called net cost of health insurance for all the payers. And this is the difference between the premiums earned and benefits incurred. And it includes um, premium taxes, admin costs, net addition to reserves, and profit and losses. This category kind of is one of the major factors in the swings in the growth by payers and in commercial in particular. And commercial, they also have to pay the ACA fees to the federal government every other year. So that can sometimes account for the swings. In the commercial insurance, they have the two components. It's the admin and then they have change in surplus where Medicare and Medicare do not. Um, I can, we can explain more at another time if anybody needs more information. I have this slide every year to show the percentage of what private payers like you and I will pay for provider services such as dental and vision and durable medical equipment versus other services like home health and nursing home, which is usually funded by public payers. Lori, this is Robin. Can I, before you jump in, I just, uh, on the previous slide, if I'm recalling correctly, we include, uh, it, one thing that's not may not be intuitive is we do include state employees and teachers, for example, in, at, under commercial insurance, right? Not government funded. That's, that's correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I remembered that right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we're transitioning into comparing Vermont spending to the United States. And so I wanted to go over our resources. Um, we want to emphasize that when researchers and others compare United States to Vermont and, and other states, they use the state of residence or state of provider data from CMS. And that is produced every five years. And the most recent was 2014, published in 2017. They get their estimates from census data. And if that's not available, they get it from other population data, wages, employment, and IRS business receipts. Um, our data is small compared to the United States. And, our, and the United States works in thousands of dollars. 
So ours is more precise and Vermont rich. So I'm just, we'd like to um, sometimes tell people to be cautious when they're comparing Vermont to the United States because we're so small, it's hard to compare. Um, we use the Vermont, we use the health consumption expenditures when we are comparing Vermont to the United States, where the United States would normally use national health expenditures. And so we use oh. health consumption because it includes personal health care, administrative net cost of insurance, and public health activity. We don't use the NHE because that also includes the investments in research structures and equipment. This slide is showing you the different comparisons where Vermont is not included under NHE. We include ourselves under HCE. And then we also have the uh, personal health care. Um, the United States increased 4.8% in their spending, where we increased 1.9%. And the per capita for the United States increased 4.1%, and Vermont increased 1.4%. Our share, healthcare share of gross domestic product or gross state product is 18.8% and the United States is 16.9%. Um, I included this slide because I was asked in the past for the history of Vermont statistics compared to the United States. If needed, we can report back to the early 90s if anybody wants this data. The changes in Vermont's administration and net cost of insurance in 2015, 16, and 17 were significant enough to cause the swings in the annual percentage of total spending. Again, this may be caused from the ACA fees or insurance surplus changes from year to year. But as you see, if you can see the trend line, Vermont is going, trending downward where the United States is trending upward. And this is, again, we're comparing ourselves to health consumption expenditures. And the per person or per capita growth, we are increasing at 1.4% for this year, and the United States is 4.1%, and we're trending downward. Our um, growth on average for 2010 through 2018 is 3%, and the United States is 3.7%. And then this slide is just showing the dollars. So, Lori, we've had a request from someone um, following um, along on the uh, pages. If you could just, uh, as you switch slides, say which slide you are on. Thank so you. those that are not using the screen, they're just using the, uh, the actual off the okay, website. Okay, I'm on slide 27. Where that was the per capita per person slide showing the dollar amounts from 2010 to 2018 for Vermont and the United States. Thank you, Kevin. Slide 28 is showing the gross state product or, or gross domestic product and how Vermont has compared itself to the United States since 1996 to 2018. Um, you can see the spending in Vermont we have been pretty high, and for the time period of um, the last 10 years, it's been about 18 to 19 percent of gross state product. Um, it dropped a little bit in 18, and so did the United States. We have generous Medicaid programs, and of course, our aging population can account for some of this growth. By 29, I'm transitioning to the provider analysis. So again, we look at 2013 to 2018. In this look, usually we have provider direct reporting telling us how they got paid, who paid us, what payers, Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial. And um, it's different from the resident side because the resident side is payers, commercial, Medicaid, and Medicare, telling us what they paid for. So the revenues received by the providers 
grew from 4.8 billion in 2010 to 6.4 billion in 2018, and this was an average annual increase of 3.7%. 2016 was 3.2%, 17 was 3.3, and 18 is 3.2%. Um, this was mainly dominated by the growth in the hospitals, which makes up about 47% of the revenues. Slide 32. This, uh, when we talk about provider revenues, we're talking about in and out of state patients having services within Vermont. So this particular slide is trying to show you the total spending for each of the provider categories and what is the percentage of the total spending those categories make up. So our hospitals, um, it's, we have strong hospital data because we regulate 14 community hospitals. We also have data from the Veterans Hospital in White River, Vermont Psychiatric Care Hospital in Berlin, and the Brattleboro Retreat. We also have direct reporting from nursing homes and home health and hospice. The other provider services are from a variety of sources, like drugs and supplies is from Kaiser. And this is without rebates, as we do not have reporting on that. Physicians are net of hospital employed physicians because we report that within the hospitals. And the other provider categories are estimated similar to the physician revenues, which is basically taking um, physicians that are derived from the economic census and the NHT, and then we'd use VCURES for reasonableness. The mental health and other government activities category is the same as the resident, and the provider analysis, as you will notice, does not have admin or net cost of insurance at all when we're comparing it to the resident analysis. Slide 33. Um, so we're showing that the Revenues increased 3.2% this year, and this was the largest seen, as we've been saying, in the hospitals, and the hospitals include hospital-employed physicians. The other categories were the licensed professionals of 11%, and home health was 9.5%, independent physicians is 3.2%, vision 2.2%, drugs was 1%. But we saw a decrease in nursing homes of 23 This slide, we were able to get information from the Department of Health, their 2018 physician census, and they reported 2,473 physicians were practicing in Vermont, and there's 1,368 are full-time equivalents. Of that is about 82% is, uh, or 1,132 are employed in the hospitals. We also like to show that the hospital's physician revenue has been increasing from 35% in 2010 to 51% in 2018. Um, we're seeing that the hospitals are employing more and more physicians as sustainability of independent physician practices are getting harder and harder. Keeping up with technology and the administrative burden from the payers is some of the reasons physicians are leaving independent practice besides some of the physicians are retiring. Slide 35. This information is from the hospital um, discharge data set. And we were sometimes um, in our hospital budget, some of the hospitals mentioned that they were seeing more and more out of state patients through the years. But based on this information, the state as a whole has been remaining constant at 13% for the last couple of years. We wanted to show you a little bit of the changes between hospitals that we regulate between 2017 and 2018. By 36, we're comparing the resident analysis to the provider analysis. If you look closely under the provider services, you'll see hospital physicians under resident analysis is zero. Um, the provider side is um, over 472 million dollars. That's because that's hospital employed physicians that are seen in the hospital budget that we regulate. Um, drugs and supplies on the resident side is less than on the provider because it's net of rebates. And the provider side does not have admin and net cost of health insurance. Those are the major reasons why they're so different. 
but they're also, as we've mentioned, different populations, different patients. Um, we are tasked with also having a projection of resident and provider uh, spending. And this year, I was we have direct the 18 expenditure analysis that we just showed you. And then we're projecting 2019 and 20. And the main increase was seen um, from Medicaid, and we got that direct reporting from Medicaid of 3.2%, or overall 3.2, but Medicaid was showing an increase of 3.4%. The next slide is 38. This slide, we have provider revenues increasing 3.2% from 18 to 19. And this is mainly driven by the hospitals, and which make up 47% of the total revenues. We have direct reporting of Vermont community hospitals for the period 2018 through 2020, because we monitor their budgets. And then the rest of the projections are based on NHG and Vermont trends. Down the slide 30. Slide 39 is our appendix to let you know there's more analysis and um, sources. I can go through this pretty quickly because then we would like to hear from David Glavin about Tableau. This is the matrix of the information I showed you previously. This is slide 40, and it's showing each pair what they said they were uh, spending on for like other professionals, other um, unclassified physicians and things like that. So this is the payer telling us what they paid or spent on. And then we also broke out commercial insurance to show you self-insured, Blue Cross, TVHP, MVP, workers' comp, and other private. Slide 42 is the provider analysis similar, but this is where the providers are telling us how they're being paid, who's paying them commercial Medicaid and Medicare. Slide 43, this is enrollment in our different payer categories. So we have rich data from the annual statement, supplemental statement report, and we also have it from VCURES. We also have data from the Vermont Household Health Insurance Survey. So very rich data that we've been using for many years. And so this helps us to understand where people are enrolling and the changes from year to year. So the other thing we want to caution is based because of my because of our sources, sometimes people can be counted twice. And that's why we have that note towards the bottom of the slide. And then 44 is my uh, method and sources and technical uh, oh. notes. And um, we also want to let you know that 2017 expenditure analysis was revised because we had better Medicare data. And so when that's revised, we also revise the out-of-pocket. And also out-of-pocket is a pretty complicated um, calculation using Vermont data, Medicare oh. allocations, commercial allocations, and also the Vermont household health insurance and census data. So, um, it's just not from one place, just to let everybody know that. And then I would like to introduce David Glavin for the Tableau Interactive Visualization. Oh, All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, David. Are we okay? Okay, I'm just gonna go right off and share my screen. Um, so, um, so in conjunction with Lori's um, annual report, we developed a tool with the, the analytics team has developed a tool, and this has been around for about three years. Um, we've developed a tool for that summarizes um, some of the information that she's presented within the expenditure analysis. And Laura, you're gonna have to remind me of this, but we, that we only have a resident spending only um, perspective. And I can't remember the reason why we don't do the provider. So if you could step in and remind everyone why we can't um, create that. I think because the categories could not um, be relatable sometimes. And that's Correct. what we were trying to do, the relationship. Um, and if we found it 
made more sense because the total cost of care and most all of our work is on the resident side. So as a result of that, we, the this particular um, visualization is specific to the resident spending, and so it does not um, include the provider perspective analysis that's included in the entire expenditure analysis report. Um, so first of all, how do we access it? Um, and there's a couple of, of ways to access the report. The permanent methods are obviously going to be through the board meeting information. Um, Abigail has included a link um, in today's agenda. So if you just select that, that will launch what's uh, the Tableau Public website, which is where we have several of our visualizations housed. And I can actually show you that real quick here. So we have a few other visualizations at this website. You can Google this as well too, Google Tableau, GMCB, Green Mountain Care Board, and to get to this site. And in here, you have the expenditure analysis report to view, um, in addition to a couple of other reports that we've have available. And we're slowly populating this I shouldn't even say slowly, that's speeding up. We have a few more that are um, cooking in the oven right now that should be up and running within the next four to six weeks. Um, so anyways, let me show you a couple other ways of accessing. So from the Green Mountain Care Board's main page, if we go to the research and reports link, and then the expenditure analysis, enrollment and market share reports, this picture over here, and there's a little message here that also says click on the picture, but this picture over here, will launch the link to the, um, or launch the URL to the uh, visualization, the interactive visualization. And then the last location is through the data and analysis link. And then we have a data, data reporting link. And on that, we scroll down, we have several public reports. And within here is the expenditure analysis as well. And then that will also launch the tool. So the tool is available without, you don't need the saw, you don't need software. Um, it's uh, like I said, this is interactive and it's, it's, it's um, just URL based. So through a web browser. So a couple of limitations on the web browsers. Um, and this is most likely due to a tour for with the Microsoft um, visualization tool, but uh, Tableau, which obviously is a different company, doesn't play well with Microsoft products. So if you're going to use a browser to, um, if you're going, when you use your browser to launch the visualization and um, kind of go through and play with it, um, we recommend using either uh, Google Chrome, Firefox, or Safari to do that, um, as it doesn't play, the software does not play very well with Microsoft browser products. And uh, like Lori said, if you have any questions, feel free to just cut in at any time. Um, and I'll just try to keep this brief. I just want to give a, a high overview. I think she's gone through the analytics, el analytic elements of it. I just want to show you the tool itself, um, a couple of features with the tool um, in terms of, of download capabilities. And then just to kind of show you the uh, high overview of the, of the visualizations. And at some point, if you guys are here, anybody wants to go in, can take a look at it. So. Um, on our second tab, so you'll, you'll notice that we have a series of tabs across the top here. This is going to take us to the different, um, what we call dashboards, which has combination of um, graphs and interactive visualizations. Um, so on this first page here, we have a definitions page, just so that we can be clear about what our population descriptions are, the methodology, and this is a very high view of the methodology, our data sources. Um, but what's most important on this page is that we have a couple of hyperlinks here. One that will take us to the current expenditure analysis report. So if I click on that, click on that, it'll take you to the report that Lori just presented. And the second one takes you to the more detailed manual. So if you have any questions about a particular um, graph or something out of the report, this gives a much more detailed um, description of the methodology and um, sort of the, the backbone behind the process that Lori has developed. So that's the, I think the, the, the most important element from this. If these are sort of high overview um, briefs of, of the, the data source population and the methodology, but if you want more specifics um, to, the, to the current 2018 report, the link, hyperlink is here, and so the, the real methodology and more detailed elements are in the manuals down here. Um, 
So the first view that we have is what uh, residents spend over time. And these views were developed and we had a couple of our board members um, a couple of years ago helped uh, develop these views and select some of uh, the key graphs out of Lori's report. And then we tried to create them in a, in a put them into a visually aesthetic um, format so that you could get uh, glean information um, based on just looking at visualizations and not uh, digging deep into the report or looking at cross taps, series of cross taps. Um, the one highlight I want to uh, mention on these, uh, or a couple of things I want to mention on this page is we have some highlighting elements here. Um, so if you actually select on one of the uh, payer types, um, it will highlight that graph on the right hand side. And this is giving us the percent change from the previous year. So one thing to note is that if there's a, what's called a tooltip, so as I hover over this graph, you'll see a little box up here that says 9.5% change. And it gives you detail with respect to which year that change is. So this is, there's a 9.5% change from 2014, which doesn't appear on this graph, 2000 to 2015, although we do have those values over here. You can select multiple payer types by either holding the control bar and selecting another payer type, and you'll see that they highlight on the corresponding bar, uh, line graph. If you select again, that will clear the graph, so you have to click a couple of times on it to get the graph to clear. There's also a reset tab, so if I have these collected over here, if you go down to the lower right-hand corner, there's a reset. This reset tab will reset the entire workbook back to the original settings. So if you make, and you'll see in subsequent views that there are, um, you can filter by year and things like that. If you filter by year on another page and then you reset, it will reset the entire workbook. So you'll have to go back and if you, if you, and I'll, you'll see that in more detail when I go to one of the other pages here, but I just want to point out that reset. So if you are uncomfortable with this or you can't get this to deselect, Go down and hit the reset tab here and it'll reset the page for you. You can also correspondingly select any one of these graphs, any one of these line graphs, and it will highlight the spend on the um, in the bar graph. And then one thing I also want to point out that we sometimes get questions or in, and there's sometimes confusion about um, for some first-time users about like, well, what is that? We don't understand why. Um, where is this minus three, minus 3.9% 3 coming from? Um, and if don't, I think a lot of people end up looking at these are the totals for each year across the top here. The minus 3.9%, the 6.8% is actually within the commercial group. So if we look, we see that there was a decrease up from 1.92 billion in 2014 to 1.8.5 billion in the commercial payer group in 2015, that's that minus 3.9%. So that's what that is referencing. It's not referencing the total increase over time. Those increases are, are um, represented up here. So the actual total values are um, uh, percent changes are, are highlighted in this table up here. So any questions about that one? And also just pay attention to the notes when you guys are in here. I put a lot of notes in to kind of um, help um, define. So, you know, what, what is involved, what, you know, what is in the commercial bucket? What is in the other sources bucket? So the definitions will be located in some notes or they'll be located in tool tips, those little bars that kind of pop up as I move over the graphs themselves. Um, the next dashboard is the private versus government compare. Um, on this one here, I just wanted to point out the this is the the, the two filters on this are filtering for year. The filters um, obviously will not apply to the um, the expenditures over time um, because we're not going to be filtering down to a, particular, a single year here. The filters by year will filter the government versus provider, the payers breakdown, or the spend of government provider or and private within each one of the providers. And it'll also change the total expenditures graph as well. So if I select a different year here, we'll see that the graph should update for these two graphs here and the two bar graphs here. And then you get detail within uh, providers, the, the breakdown of the government and private spending within each one of the provider types. Um, the categories are listed over here. So what belongs to government, what belongs to private. I want to point out, this is very important, that these two um, 
provider types are excluded in administration and change in surplus. There's a note down here um, that the data source does not allow for these values to be distributed between private and government groups, and therefore we excluded them from this page. So the reason I want to point this out is that you may look at this total expenditure value over here of say 5.51 billion, and I'm in 2015. So if I go back to the resident spend over time perspective and look at 2015, I'll notice that it says 5.72 billion, which is the actual total spend that includes um, that includes the admin slash change in surplus exclusions. Um, that delta is represented down in this note how, down here. So it says the missing amount from the grand total for these categories is the 206 million. So that $206 million that gets us up to 5.7 billion for 2015 are located down in this note down here. So just pay attention to that and don't, don't uh, come to the conclusion that we've missed or left something out here um, or that there's, there's two different spends. The actual total spend is located on the resident time or you can add this 206 million into the 5.51 billion to come up, come up with that total. And then the other piece to this graph or to this particular view is the spend over time. So the breakdown of these categories, except instead of looking at a bar graph for the specific for a specific year, we have the spend broken down over time with the total amount. So you can select on select on hospitals, for example, and we'll give that hospital private. And if you hover over any one of these individual modules, you'll see that we have the category and the specific spend amount um, down to the dollar value. And then we the next tab is the resident spend by provider. Uh, this provides a cross tab with um, a percent breakdown by each of the providers over time. And then down below, we have a little bit more detailed view of each of the provider breakdown into the payer types, commercial, Medicare, Medicaid, out-of-pocket, and other government spending. Um, it, the default setting is for hospitals. And if you'll notice that I have dynamic um, titles. So if you change any one of the years, the years should subsequently change so that you know that you're looking at the 2016 resident spend by, by provider. And then this is the proportion breakdown within the group hospitals. And the tree map over here gives a visualization um, in rectangles of that proportion to kind of give you a quick look of, all right, commercial looks like about two thirds, Medicare and Medicaid is, or, or I'm sorry, about half Medicare and Medicaid represents about another third, or, or these other four categories represent another quarter. And then that breakdown within those, over and the actual specific amounts um, can be can be found by high, by hovering over each one of the payer types. And that will give you the exact expenditure within the hospital group. To switch the type of provider, just click on one of the bar tabs, and that bar tab will swap out the, um, the tree, and you'll see that you get 93% for Medicaid here. And if you hover over this one, because there's not enough space to actually put the um, other government value in here, you hover over that um, and it'll, it, the tooltip should provide you with what payer type that is. Now, because of that, um, I also want to point out, I think it's dental is a good example. 2016. Yeah, so you'll notice over here, I have two very tiny little slivers that represent about 0.1%. Um, so that's one of the sort of drawbacks to this. Um, you're really getting a high overview of the spend within each one of the provider types here to give you the main spenders. But if you can actually see those details, if you hover over them, they will show up and you'll see that you do have those point that, that those missing value or what appears to be um, missing dollar values that are, that are represented within them. So with these interactive visualizations, they are interactive. So I do encourage people to kind of play with them and, um, and, um, pay attention to a lot of the tips that we've put inside of them. If you, like I said, if you hover over a particular bar here, you can get the exact spend instead of the, um, instead of the uh, um, spend in billions of dollars, we get the exact spend here. And then also a little note to like click on this bar if you wanna highlight that in spending and kind of get just a graphic view of what's the breakdown within that other profession in 2016 category. Like I said, if you need to reset this, just hit the reset button and it'll reset this. But like I said, it'll also reset your other visualiz the other visualizations in each one of the previous or any of one of the dashboards. 
Um, let me see. Okay, and then the last one I want to show in detail is this resident expenditure analysis um, cross tab, which has our uh, providers um, by payer type breakdown. And I really like this just because it was uh, tricky to put together, but um, we also provide a, the year selection filter. And also if you click on any one of these value types, it will break down the percentage of the spend either by, um, by the payer type or you can do it across and it'll be by payer type within each one of the provider types. So um, just another feature that we've added in. I think this was added in last year and really like this as well too. So, and also one thing to point out, so as you hover over this, you'll see this message come up that says select the plus bar above hospitals category and to the left of the total. So you'll see this plus bar appears over here. If you click on that plus bar, that brings up a little bit, detail, a little bit more detail of the sub provider types within each one of the main provider categories. And this mimics one of um, Lori's um, cross tabs that she has in, within the report itself. Um, so this also provides that provides that that detail as well here, and these percent values across and down also um, will work with that as well as the year filtering. And any questions? Okay, one last uh, thing. So first of all, there, not first, I want to talk a little bit about just um, a couple of the download features that people can use for this. So first of all, we have this, the data for downloads, so the data set that I use to build this. We're, this is going to be changed, um, and I want to point this out on, I'm going to be changing this, this final tab just to allow for a, a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet. You'll be able to click on a tab like this and it'll download just a CSV directly. Um, I think it'll be easier for folks. So if you come to our website, you'll see the expenditure analysis is, I'm going to be adding another tab in here to allow for download of just a CSV slash Excel file to be able to access that data a little bit easier. You can, I do wanna point out that you can also do that from this particular page here. And that is located on this download button. And I hope everybody can see this, there's a little download icon in the lower right hand, not to be confused with this one up here. I've spent time with Tableau talking about this. This, this button up here will download the entire workbook. And so anybody that has the software can download this entire workbook and open it up in the software and be able to manipulate, um, change some of the visualizations, um, access the data that's within there. Um, to download the actual data itself, you, there, and there's several other options that you're allowed with here. This download um, icon down here will launch this, this window and you can download an image. The image will just download the current image or view that you have up. So if I have, so for example, if I'm gonna download an image of this particular page, it won't download each individual image of these graphs. What it will do is download the entire dashboard image. So that, shall, that will open up and then you'll have a dashboard and that image can be used and imported into a PowerPoint if somebody wanted to use that or embed it on a web page, et cetera. Um, I think the easiest tool is, and I'm gonna go back to that, I think the easiest tool to use is this PowerPoint tool. And what the PowerPoint tool will do is allow you to, when, it's, when it says from this dashboard, um, it means the specific page that we're looking at right now. If I click on this, it will allow me to pick any one of these uh, four graphs that are located on this page here. So I can select all of these and it'll download a little PowerPoint presentation. And I encourage people just to play with this. I'm not gonna go into more detail than that, but I just want people to know that there's the um, capability of actually downloading the entire workbook as well. All of the visualizations and all the look and it'll download an automatic PowerPoint presentation with each one of the graphs in there. You'll also notice this is one of the graphs, it's a, it's a note that's put in there. So it'll download anything that I've developed to put into the visualization. So, um, but just another nice feature that's that's um, that's accessible. And then, like I said, you can also download, let me go back to that data page. The entire data set. 
Um, so you can do it in two ways. As a cross tab, which I encourage folks to do, the cross tab will just, it'll be a CSV file. So pay attention that it's a CSV file and not a, uh, not an Excel workbook. So you need, would need to save this as an Excel workbook if you wanted to create this in Excel. But this is the entire data set that I used. This is the base data set, exactly how it looked when I um, got it from Lori to build the entire workbook. And so anybody can download this and we have, even though the views are limited to five-year views, 2014 through 2018, um, we have data going back to 2012 available. And then in addition to that, I'm not gonna go into detail on the data. This is for more advanced data users. Um, you can download text files and the full data set. And when it says the full data set, if you click on show all columns, this will include every single element that I created building the dashboard. So this would be a little bit more for power users if they wanna download the data that, um, set in the format that I've created within the workbook itself. So that ends the presentation um, with regards to our, to our tool and availability of it. If, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So questions for either Lori or David from the board. I have a question. Go ahead, Tom. <clears throat> so this is incredibly granular data and congratulations to you all uh, for putting together and for Lori being the backbone of this, you know, o over the years. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm, as we're going through this, I mean, there were some low numbers that popped up like the 1.9% uh, 2018 over 2017 increase in healthcare spending. And I'm just wondering how hard it would be uh, I mean, I, there's some very top side numbers where you take gross spending and divide it by the population and you get a per capita number, but how hard would it be to get more granular in that regard so that we could see affordability relative to the Medicaid population? So we have the, the spending side of Medicaid. Um, DIVA has obviously the income side of Medicaid. Um, and is there a marriage there so that we can have a more insight into uh, the affordability of, of, of Medicare. Um, similarly, uh, is there a path, um, which I can't see one, but I'm wondering if anyone's thought about uh, a path relative to uh, affordability of, of the commercial spend. So it's uh, affordability is one of our, our major mantras. And um, I'm just wondering how, you know, how, how this, uh, this data might be uh, manipulated, if it can be a little bit to profile affordability by different groups? Um, we've had that request many times. And the concern I have is where do we bucket for a payer out of pocket? And where do we bucket uh, the other government spending that we get from state and federal? So it's easy to say this is commercial, this is Medicaid, and this is Medicare. But where am I going to put uninsured as a population, where am I going to put the spending for out of pocket and other government? Um, if anybody has any ideas, we can try it out. But it, I mean, and it's probably just a small percentage change, but I think that that's a great idea, Tom. And we've been trying to think of it. I've done, it just doesn't add up, if you know what I mean, to the total spending, but it, we can do something for you. Um, I had a couple questions too. Lori, um, looking at the chart, is there a way to do how much is out of state spending for Vermonters and separating any of those charts by out of state, the out of state spend and the in state spend and seeing where the changes are? I was able to get that. That's where I was mentioning that in state versus out of state was either 75% or 76% between years. Medicare was like 68 in 2017 and like 73 in 2018. Yes, we can, and I can um, dive deep for that information if you want, but it would only be that particular bucket. I couldn't do it for the um, out of pocket. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, I know we're moving into a busy season with other things, but it, it would be interesting to see what the trends are for 
people who are going out of state by some of these categories and what's staying in state. And if there's anything we can see from that, um, you know, and that so that might be for a future time. Sure. Um, just a, a, one question. When it, it looked like one of the biggest changes, and I think it was on page 12, was um, vision and DME, I think, went down year over year by 44, I think it was like 44 million. Um, yet when you look on the other side of it, which was the on um, page 32 or, um, or page 15, DME actually was going up slightly. So when we're kind of looking at the differences between the revenue and the expenditures, um, it seemed like that was an area that um, had a big change. And when I looked at the total spending of that area, it looked like it was only 112 million. So to change 44 million in a year um, was a lot. Because of course, I like to see the 1.9% in spending, but you know, there's always that disconnect between that spending and and the revenue, which was I think what 3.7. I believe most of that was my calculation out of pocket, and also taking the allocation from NHE and our Vermont Health Health, Health Insurance Survey. Um, I, I was questioning that too, but I didn't have quite enough time to really investigate it. Okay. It just seemed like that, that was a pretty big change that was down on one side and then on the other side it was fairly flat and on total spending. So, mm -hmm. um, it, it, you yeah. know, and that 44 million out of, you know, the, it still was, would, if, if that had not changed, it would have been a little bit higher percent in spending change. But, um, and then it also depends on what the individual payers were telling me was being spent on that category. Okay. And then one other thing for the future, and I, I think we've maybe talked a little bit about this before, but the, the admin and net costs, you know, it, it, it sometimes appears like the admin's going down, but it's going down because of changes to surplus and reserves. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of like maybe we should look at admin costs for admin costs and see how that's changing and then surplus to reserves. And that, again, could be for the future. But um, it, it just kind of masks the fact that, you know, true admin costs may be going up year over year. And then it's being offset by change to surplus, which is not, to me, necessarily reflective just of admin, right? That's that's more probably reflective right. of claims. So. Right, and that's why on slide 19, we wanted to emphasize you only see that in commercial. So if you wanted me to just show commercial, like at the bottom of slide 19, is showing that uh, change in surplus and then change in administration from 12 to the 18. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, that would be good. Okay, no, and it's lots of information. It's always helpful to look through this, and it takes a lot to digest. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's why I'm just giving it to you just within this last 45 minutes doesn't tell you what it takes to put it together. And if anybody's interested, just let me know, and I can share my resources and data. Yeah, no, thank you. It's obviously a tremendous amount of work, and um, you know it it gets referred to and a lot of other things. So, um, yeah. So thank you for that. That's all I have. Okay. Um, Lori, just a, okay. Go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was going to say, Lori. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, and David as well, and everybody else who contributed to this. I know it's a monumental task, and it's heavily utilized. So. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm just wondering if you can, can you go to slide 32 for a quick sec? Or 32 or 33? Either one of those, I think. Okay. If you want me to um, Sure. Um, you, is it up right now? It is, it's perfect for me. Okay, good. Uh, I'm just wondering, with respect to um, healthcare revenues and hospitals and physicians. One of the things that you had mentioned was that hospital employed physicians would be counted in hospital, right? Is that right? right. 
Right. So I'm just wondering, given we've had this shift over the last five or seven years of more physicians moving out of private practice into hospital employment, you know, the slice of physicians is going to look smaller. The slice of hospitals is going to look larger, but it's really just a transfer of, of employment status to some degree. And I'm wondering, is it possible to slice out of hospitals, you know, the the physician component of that so that we can actually see that trend over time and recognize that that's what's happening to some degree? Is that possible? We have, yes, you should see that, at least a slice of it. In on, at least for this year, for 2018, slide 42, you should see inpatient physician and outpatient physician for our community hospitals. And we have that for as long as we've been reporting it. And we can give you that trend if you want. I guess I was thinking 32 and 33. It doesn't break that out. So, no. but it talks. No, because so. we're talking about hospitals. And that's only a piece of their spending. And also when we're talking about hospitals, in that particular slide we were talking about, it included the veterans hospital and the psych hospitals. Right. Okay. So if, yeah. if you want to get more granular, I can. I can. I can pull okay. out like we can talk on, offline about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the board? If not, we'll open it up for public comments. Are there public comments? Hi, Kevin. It's uh, it's Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Uh, just a quick follow up on uh, Jessica's uh, question just now, and in, in speaking about the physician category, I'm curious as to how you capture our advanced practice folks. Uh, they're, I would imagine, they're more likely to be um, employed uh, than the physician. So, where do they? go? Do they go in the general bucket of hospital expenses or are they under a, a separate provider bucket or, or where are they? Um, it all, de it depends how the census also counts them. So they would be in like the office of physicians and that's basically what this uh, provider revenue analysis is looking at is the offices. So if, like we, I just mentioned, if they're accounted for in the physician office, that's where they would be. If they're in the hospital physician office, they would be in the hospital. Does that help a little? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Um, and then I had a, another couple of comments on the Tableau piece, and I wanted to really uh, thank you guys and David, um, particularly for the presentation. I, I'm familiar with Tableau and have used it in a few other uh, projects um, previously, and so I, I totally understand the amount of work and rework it takes to put this together, so thank you. Um, and it has a potential to really inform a lot of decisions that we make. And I had a question as an example. So if, if I click on the, the tab on the Tableau um, file that says, for example, resident spend by provider, uh, the top spend, as we've said uh, today, is in hospitals. Um, and I wonder if there's a way to drill down or is the plan in the future to drill down into hospitals to see are all hospitals uh, spending at this present rate, which is, I can't see it now in my format, but uh, let's see, 2018, it was 36.3%. So do we know that all hospitals, you know, is there one hospital that's 50%, one hospital that's 12%? Uh, are there plans to take a look at that? Um, I'm not sure in Tableau, but we would have those percentages in my data. Um, I'm not sure if Dave, would, if anybody could take um, download the data and get those percentages if you open up the hospital category you might be able to find that. Because I have hospitals, like I mentioned, the, the two psychiatric hospitals, the VA, and then our community hospitals as the main, are combined for total hospitals. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking that that might provide some information where you could look for variation in um, increases or decreases um, to, to try to learn from those changes. Sure. Yeah, and those are elements that we could incorporate. Um, you know, if we have the if we have the, the data, uh, we can incorporate those elements into um, into the uh, workbook, the visualization itself. Or in this case, it would probably be a different view on a different page, but um, but there would be some relationship between that that we can certainly build in. Uh, anything's possible. It just is just uh, takes some thinking and some work. So. Right. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Kathy. Other public comment. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Susan Aronoff from the Vermont nice Developmental business. Disabilities Council. Hi. Um, I, I think I heard Lori about three, maybe four times during your presentation, a reference to something to do with the ACO spend in relation to the slide you were talking about. So there was one point when you said what the resident spend was for Vermont, and then you said some percent, maybe 10, was ACO. And there was a similar reference for the Medicare and Medicaid spend, but I didn't see anything like that on the slides themselves. So I'm wondering if you can shoot me an email or post those references, and if you had some breakout on Tableau or somewhere else that one could look at these things by in relationship to the ACO. Mm -hmm. um, we could try the 10% um, the that I was referencing was comparing the resident expenditure analysis and the total cost of care spending and then the One Care Vermont budget. And all I did was take that $609 million and compare it to the total spend on the resident side, which equaled about 10%. The other information I can get it for you, Susan, the other information is not necessarily comparing apples to apples because you're doing state fiscal years and calendar years. But I can get you that information. That that would be helpful. It was just odd, you know, to go along and hear a reference to the thing that I'm most interested in and think that you guys are going to develop a way to track the expenditures in relation to you. Um, but not to see that reflected in the actual document. So I, if I'm missing a tracking that is ACO related, that would be good to know. Sounds like I'm not, but if you can send me those quotes that you had in the presentation, that would be great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Susan. I see that Mort Wasserman has his hand up, Mort. Hi. Um Thanks. This is such an impressive and uh, presentation and amount of work. I have a question that may be a little naive. Is there a way to look at expenditures with a little more granularity about the patients? So, for instance, I'm interested in age groups. Medicaid includes two very different populations, a population of people, adults with disability, and a population of children. Is there a way to drill down into that? We, I don't have that information. We would have to drill down into maybe VCURE's information to be able to get that for you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rick Dooley had his hand up. I thank you so much for that presentation. Um, this is Rick Dooley representing Health First. And you had mentioned that there are challenges facing the independent practices that are driving independent doctors out and raising the hospital employed. Is there any way to compare, you know, given the reduced cost of the um, outpatient independent practices compared to hospital-based, is there any way to compare what that difference would be in expenditure if folks remained independent as opposed to becoming hospital employed? Um, it could if I was able to have that rich data sent to us, but we have a, that's been a challenge to get the independent physician revenue um, dollars. So I'm using census information. Thanks. Does that answer your question? I, I mean, I'd love to be able yeah. to get that information if we could have a resource, a direct resource. 
All right, no, that's good to know because we may be able to help with some of that data production. Thank you. Oh, that would be great. Other public comment? Other public comment? Hearing none, I just want to uh, really thank uh, Lori and David for their hard work. Lori, you've uh, once again been a rock star in preparing this analysis when your team is such short staffed, you still were able to deliver it. And uh, we truly appreciate it. Kevin, if there, I would like to acknowledge the people we see on slide 50, all of the agencies, commercial insurers, provider community, and as you mentioned, our teams at the Green Mountain Care Board for helping with this data report. Thank you, Lori. So with that, is there any old business to come before the board? Is there any new business to come before the board? Again, hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of the day.